it'll go down as one of those moments if you, when you if you were at the game you were just you seen the banner unfolding VAR decision and then you're waiting on the second part of the banner unfurling and then the total laughter cheers and roars as they unfurl the banner for the VAR decision and we are well aware that the man in question did see the banner he did have a look over at it as you can see from the pictures in other Celtic FC news Kyogo Furiashi went off with a shoulder injury again he got bundled to the ground by the two players, uh, two St Mirren players, and obviously he's got previous with that shoulder, so he is going in for a scan today, Ange Postacoglu said after the game. After the game yesterday, there was a cracking interview with the Celtic manager and the previous Celtic manager, Gordon Strachan, and Gordon was talking about the fitness of the team, and he says people don't understand what goes on in the background and how fit these players actually are and how fit the Celtic squad are. The fact that St Mirren had a real good go yesterday and why can't teams do that in the league? I mean, I know they went out 5-1 five, five um, defeat and in the league they basically try and not get a 5-1 defeat so they close down the defence and they sit back for the best part of 90 minutes and try and play the last 10. But yesterday St Man did have a really good go and it was a good game to watch. Um, the first half was brilliant, you know, it was, there was really good football from both sides, which was good for a cup game. Um, Ange Postecoglou and Gordon Strachan were speaking about, Gordon basically says to him, look, it's, people don't understand how fit these players are. To have that intensity for 90 minutes, to be f focused, mentally focused, and, you know, so, so damn focused on the game with that tempo, it takes a lot out of the players and the fact that they are really, really fit was uh, he was really impressed in the fact that he's got his son to even lose a couple of pounds. Um, Ange Postecoglou also spoke about the noise speculation. It was just pure noise speculation leading them to, to Leeds. And though he was asked after the game again about the speculation, he says, if anyone thinks in the last seven days I've thought about anything but preparing the team to play for today, then they obviously haven't got a clear idea of what I am about. Um, it's, you know, it's, it is only the Scottish media that are going to go on and on and on. They're going to try and chase them out of Scottish football, but the, th the fact is, it isn't going to happen. They're basically just feeling conspiracies. Buster Coggle follows up as he takes on a BBC reporter after the game also. And Postal Coggle wasn't entertaining any suggestion that VAR has worked in his favour. Now, talking about VAR, I'm talking about the, the penalty that came and the sending off. The sending off for me was harsh. Was it a, a straight red card? I don't think it was a straight red card. We've seen other decisions. And this, and, we're, and it's all good this morning about VAR. And there's been a lot of decisions went against us. Um, the time it takes for VAR to get to, to do anything. I mean, when you're watching it on the telly yesterday, they're getting the replays at the exact same time. And the guys in the studio uh, commentating, they're actually saying, look, there's, there's nothing to be seen here. It's, it's taken far too long. You know, it is taking far too long. Stephen McLean failed to notice the goal-bound Celtic effort being blocked by the arm and then went to VAR and then it went to VAR and it went to VAR and then he went over and looked at the, at the screen. And it's like, well, you know, make up your minds. It, it wasn't a straight lad. It was a harsh, harsh decision. On the player, but never mind about that. Ange Postecoglou, if he stays with the club, says Hugh Keevans for the long haul, it will be to the entertainment value of the game. He is the most articulate manager in the country, and a man who could turn any phrase phrase to grace. And, and fucking Jesus, Barry. Hugh Keevans went on to say about Ange Postecoglou, he says a man with a ton of a phrase to grace any occasion should he go elsewhere with his movements. Um, it's, it's nothing, it's just conspiracy theories. I was discussing it on the radio yesterday, Postecoglou being linked with the manager of vacancy at Leeds, but Paul a caller pointed out about Michael Beale, an old conspiracy never lets you down. Uh, why was the Rangers manager not speculated to move down south. Ah, who cares about them anyway? Chris Sutton spoke after the game um, on Twitter. You all know how he likes a bit of it. But anyway, let's jump over to the comment section and see what you're saying in the comment section after yesterday's video about Chris Common saying that Celtic need to have a con plan, a concise plan on what to do when the manager does leave, hopefully in another three or four years' time. So Stephen was the first up to say, he says, at 58, Ange is probably one of the one more big move in his career if that's what he wants to do before spending more time with his family. Scottish football does have its limits, but if you if you build a good side, a few teams can compete for wins and trophies. 
Um, I don't know, they were talking about Scottish football and there was a Celtic player that went over to America that basically slated Scottish football and there was a bit of an uproar on Twitter about it saying, um, is Scottish football that bad? And I think the, the way that managers are, are setting up, I mean, you, you can see how many managers and Sposta Coglu has went through since his short time in, in football. Managers don't get the time in Scottish football to do anything. Managers are having to put out defensive looking teams to try and nullify the play of Celtic and even to an extent Sevco. What happened to the good three, four, four years ago, four or five years ago when Ronald McDyla was here and all teams were having a go? You know, even from the days, it seems to be that Scottish football has taken a bit of a step backwards. So talk about that in the comments. What do you think about the real state of Scottish football and the fact that teams do sit back for the best part of nine minutes to try and conserve their energy so that they can have a real good goal if they're still managing to hold Celtic to uh, say a 1-0 lead? Um if they've got one, if they've gone into the last 10 minutes and it's only 1 0 Celtic, you know, it's at that point that teams really have a go. And Glenn went on to say it's got to be John Kennedy, that magnificent decade with Angeball and his absence, be staying with the hoops. Would John Kennedy be a good Celtic manager in the future, or is he just one of these prolific number twos that stay with the club for a long time? We would never sell our club, says and is already at the most successful club in the world. No way would he lower his standards to a bang average Leeds United with no Champions League to look forward to. That is exactly the point that I said in the video yesterday. Also, uh, Cold says opportunity for the big man to become a Celtic legend can't see him leaving for four or five years who knows what might happen with the Super League in the next couple of years as well I think the talk of the Super League you know the, the club putting it on the back burner the managers putting it on the back burner the players don't even know about it you know it's, it's just one of these things that will knock itself about in the press until something solid actually happens Kevin went on to say it sounds like as if the media as you would say would prefer it if Ange was to go of course they would Kevin they would love it if he was to go I'm tired of Ange being linked with these other teams. Um, and it's true, but and where's this great Michael Beal that hasn't been linked with anybody because uh, he's never done anything in his managerial career? Of course, uh, John went on to say, Ange Ball is here for 10 in a row. Then he started singing that, please, because we don't know what happened the last time. Started singing that about a manager. Something today, then went on to say, Ange can build a legacy at Paradise and be here for the circus called England. Kaiser Soze went on to say, I would love the manager to cut from the same cloth as Ange in a footballing sense. Maybe the Bodo manager can play our brand of football. I, th I don't really think that we need to be looking. I think we've, what we tried to do before when Ronnie Dyler was brought into the club, Ronnie was actually meant to come in as number two to Lenny and Lenny didn't really like that. So um, I think it's all about trying to build from inside the club and build for the long term. Sinn Féin went on, on to say all Sevconians want is Ange gone. Needless to say, most of the press are Sevconian, so obviously they want Ange gone. This is very true. And then the last one goes to Johnny Boy who says 50.2 million in the bank. <laughs> Friggin' crazy. Uh, yep, motoring ahead on and off the field under the current setup. We have success that others can only have wet dreams about. Long may it continue and long may it continue. There's going to be a change of format in the videos next week. I won't be in the same studio. Just wait to see what's happening next week. Let's